to learn more about the history of the Chicano Moratorium and Ruben Salazar, please watch this video. Well, the, the, the August 29 was a very important play when we created it. Uh, it was our first play that we created collectively. It's a company, you know, as an ensemble. Uh, and we did it in 1990 in order to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Chicano Moratorium because the Chicano Moratorium happened in 1970. And many, many, many people in 1990 did not know what the Chicano Moratorium was. Many people didn't know who Ruben Salazar was. Many people didn't know what the Chicano movement was or what had been happening in the 70s. Uh, we had a method how we used to do research and Ruben Salazar and the Chicano Moratorium were very important events. And, you know, it was, it was important to allow people to know and find out these two important, uh, meaning Ruben as an important figure, an iconic figure in, 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 in American culture, and also the Chicano Moratorium and the Chicano Movement. That's what the reason. So now, you know, this year was going to be the 50th anniversary of the moratorium. And we needed to do something, meaning we, so we are going to produce the play, of course, uh, in order to bring it back. Because, uh, you know, meaning if, if you're 30 years old, you never saw the play. If you, if you, you know, or you may not even know who Ruben Salazar is now, or what the Chicano Moratorium was, or if it was the Chicano movement in the 70s. And, you know, all of that history, because we don't have enough history classes that teach us what happened during the, you know, what has been our participation in the last 100 years in this country of, of, of the Mexican community in the United States. So all of that is important, especially, you know, and, and we're, we're in Los Angeles, we, we work with our community and we're interested in, in the community in the Southwest and in Los Angeles and in the United States to be able to know their history because history gives us identity. And history to me, you know, reinforce the idea that if we know where we're coming from, we should know where we're going, <laughs> you know. The Chicano Moratorium, it was a moratorium against the Vietnam War. And what it was, it was the biggest march at the time. It was 20,000 people marched in Los Angeles going into what is now the Ruben Salazar Park. When they were there, and it was very festive, there were, you know, folkloric dances and music and speakers. It was really a peaceful, it was a peaceful moratorium. And the idea was that they were requesting to have a moratorium on the war, on the Vietnam War and 1,200 police and sheriff attacked the park and they killed Ruben Salazar and beat up everybody and tear gas everybody. And it was kind of a, a, a very horrible day for the community of East Los Angeles because they were very patriotic. I mean, in most of East Los Angeles, people don't understand that most people in East LA were, uh, people who had gone to the Korean War, to World War II, who could own houses there. So they mostly owned their houses, it was their community, and they came and they burned and it was, they destroyed everything. It was a very, very important day in the history of, of Chicanos in this country. The main, so the, the way we, we, we kind of uh, created a story. There is a film, a documentary film, about uh, the day, it's called Requiem 29. And in that particular film, in one moment, there is a, a, a policeman that hits a woman on the head, and you see her falling. So we got that, nobody knows who she is. Nobody, nobody knows who that woman is or was, even our friends involved in the movement, when the film came out, nobody knew who she was. So we got that character and put it in the 1990s, being a PhD student at UCLA, teaching a professor and being ready to get hired with a tenure position. 
in there. Uh, and at the same time, she's writing a book about Ruben Salazar and the Chicano movement. Uh, so, and, and, and so in that, so what Levin's story is that at, that at that day, that particular day when the play begins, she gets a phone call and they had killed one of her, they had shot one of her students, the police, and is trying, and, and it's in, in life support through the play. So the community is asking her to come out. She's gonna be given an award by the mayor of the city. And when she receives that award, they wanted her to make demands against police brutality. And she has a lot of issues doing that because that means she will lose her position at UCLA as a professor, or a tenure professor. So that's really kind of the story. And she's writing the book at the same time of the Chicano Moratorium. And Ruben Salazar lives with her as a ghost inside her apartment, who helps her define the most, or define the most important moments of the movement and questioning her commitment to the community because, you know, he got killed by the sheriff's department. He got murdered by them. And so now she's in the same dilemma. What do I do about this young Chicano who had been killed by the police? And, you know, what is my commitment to my community or not? What should I forget about and continue in my journey to become just a professor and, you know, become one more middle-class Mexican-American in the United States? I think what's important, again, I think we are in that moment again, meaning if you know where we are, I mean, you know where we are right now, meaning with, with, with this idea with Black Lives Matter, you know, what is your participation in Black Lives Matter as, 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 as Latinos, as people that belong in this country, as people who participate, the people who, you know, they're incarcerating, you know, separating our children and having them in cages. You know, they're arresting people and, you know, ICE is doing raids in our communities uh, or, or young men have been harassed by the police. You know, I think it's so important, again, you know, how, what is our commitment to our community? What is our commitment to the people of color in this country? What is our commitment, or, you know, and how are we gonna participate? I mean, it's, it's fascinating to me. That's what I want. I want people to understand that we've been part of this struggle for, for 70 years at least, you know, if not more, that we've been participating and the, the, and, and the create and the cultural and democratic uh, process of the United States. It's a, it, it's a community, you know, and, 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 and that we have a long history of struggle that it has to continue and it has to continue with a lot of more force today. And that, you know, that there is a history, that there is a history that teaches that, that there are people that we may not know who were very important in, in the intellectual part of American culture who got killed by the police. And by this means, Ruben Salazar. I really just wanted people to understand that, that you know, that, that we're not, we didn't just arrive yesterday, you know, and, 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 and we, we're trying, meaning all the bad PR that we get, that, you know, that we just got here, we're trying to get welfare and get things for free. It, it's obvious. I mean, not even people who just arrived can get welfare. You know, I mean, we come from people who have lots of dignity, a lot and honor. And the last thing they want to do is to take a ride for free. We are a working class and dignified people. The theater for me is like uh, opening the window of my bedroom and allow you to see who, who, re who am I really, you know, you know. And I think that's what theater does. I think people create preconceptions about the other because they don't know us. 
They don't know who we are. They don't know where we come from. And if you allow us to come into your house and you can see a glimpse of a reality, I think, I think we begin to understand each other much better. We begin to really begin to have a dialogue with each other. And we learn a lot more compassion and understanding because racism is nothing but ignorance, really. So that's the reason I think, allow us, allow us to be friends, you know. If you go to any of the readings, you're gonna be able to go into our website, you know, who is www.dlatc.org. And in that way, you can go in there and they have a place that you can donate to the theater company. And please, whatever donation is not too small, nothing is too big, nothing is too small. So please, please, please help the theater company. It's, it's very, very important to support the artists and to support uh, what the company is trying to do. Thank you so much.